We hope you've had a great week in the Lord thus far. I can promise you if you put him right in the middle of it all, you'll be blessed all week long. Doesn't matter what you go through. I mean, it matters to God. It matters to us. But I can tell you this. It doesn't matter because God will be there with you. And our message goes along with that a little bit here tonight. And we want to uh, encourage you in the Lord. Daniel 3, let's look at two verses, very familiar portion of Scripture. Let's look at verse number 16 and verse number 18. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word tonight. That word truly is powerful. Where would we be without the word? For you are the word. Lord, we need that word to envelop our hearts and our minds and every part of our being tonight as we come before you in this house. We need the strength that comes from that word, that strength to go with us, that encouragement to go with us. We need the word of God as frontlets for our eyes to keep us from temptation and sin. I pray, Lord God, that that word, like the psalmist said, would be written upon the tablets of our heart, that we would hide it there in our heart, that we might not sin against thee. Let that word become alive unto us. It's not just something that we read. It's not a storybook. It's not some fiction that we read for entertainment. That word of God is truth. For you are that word. You said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, you said. That word is alive within us tonight. Let it encourage every heart, every mind, every man, woman, boy, girl. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen. Daniel 3, let's look at verse number 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. You remember he had set up a golden image and he wanted everybody to bow down to it when they heard the sound of the sob tree, the harp and all these different instruments. He wanted them to bow down before this graven image. They said we're not quick or careful rather, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. You know what that tells me right there? They already had a made up mind. Can I tell you tonight that a made up mind is half the battle? Make up your mind who you're going to serve. Didn't Joshua say that? Choose you this day whom you will serve. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 17 what, they, let me back up. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You may be seated if you like. If God would help me tonight, I may have to repeat this a couple times for Sister Donna, not because she can't get it, but it's a little difficult tonight, the title. Whether he spare or share, he will be there. Whether he spare or share, he will be there. 
Hallelujah. The three Hebrew children, as we call them, they weren't really children. They were young men per se. But they faced what we know to be, and we call it the fiery furnace. They faced this with unshaking faith, if you will. Amen. And, and uh, they knew that their God, they said, our God, whom we serve, he is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Can I tell you tonight, that speaks nothing but faith right there off the bat. Our God is able. Oftentimes, I'll write people, whether it be in text or on Facebook or in Messenger, and I oftentimes end with these words, God is able. Can I tell you tonight, your God is able. It does not matter what you face tonight. Your God is able to pull you through. Uh, you've heard me say many times, uh, if you reach the end of your rope, uh, tie a knot in the end. Uh, and if you can stand the pull, uh, God will pull you through. Uh, your God is able. They showed faith right off the bat they were facing probably one of the greatest tests of their life they were facing can I word it this way the hottest most fiery furnace that they had ever faced before can some of you relate tonight the past two or three years has been a fiery furnace for us all we faced some things maybe not just in the past three or four years, maybe the past decade, you've faced the hottest furnace that you've ever faced before. But I will tell you this, that your God is able tonight. Your God is able. The Bible says, they said our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And then they added, but but if not, but if not, let it be known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image that thou hast set up. We're not going to bend. We're not going to bow. And guess what, O king? We're not going to burn either. Can you shout amen? They knew that their God was going to be right there with them. They they knew that their God, whether he spare, whether he share, he would be right there with them all the time. He's not going to forsake you. You may be facing the hardest trial of your life, but your God is going on before you. I said it tonight in my prayer. David was told to just sit and wait on the Lord, and sometimes that's hard. Sometimes it's difficult for us to just sit still. Colonel, I know it's been hard for you to sit still lately with the condition that you've had physically because you're a get up and go kind of guy. But I'll tell you one thing. It does not matter tonight what you're facing. If you'll listen to the voice of God, sometimes he says sit still. Keep your ears and your eyes open. And when you hear the sound in the tops of the mulberry trees, you'll know that I have sent my angel on before you. That's the time to get up and go. Sometimes we get ahead of God. Sometimes we want to exclude God from the equation. We don't want him to figure it out for us. We want to leave God out of it because we've got our own ways and our own thoughts and our own plans. But brother, can I tell you tonight that your ways are not God's ways. Your thoughts are not God's thoughts. For God's ways and God's thoughts 
uh, past finding out. Uh, we must trust him. Uh, and I'm here tonight to tell you uh, whether he spare you, uh, whether he share your circumstance, uh, he will be there for you no matter what. Uh, he went uh, along with these three Hebrew boys. Uh, there was no doubt uh, that God could. Uh, I said that God could uh, deliver these three young men uh, from the burning fiery furnace. Uh, whether or not he would uh, was all up to him. It was all uh, in his hands. Uh, so they made provision uh, for the possibility uh, that he might not. Uh, but if he should not deliver them from the fiery furnace, that burning hot fiery furnace. He would deliver them in the furnace and come what may, they would be true to their God. Oh, how we need that in the day and age that we live. We need to be true to our God. We need to know in whom we have believed. Buddha can't do it for you. Muhammad can't do it for you. You can place a flower on the grave where they laid old Buddha down. Hear Muhammad's children pray to his bones in the ground. But journey through Jerusalem to a graveyard empty there and you can look for Jesus body but there ain't nobody there. Allah can't do it for you. Buddha can't do it for you. Muhammad can't do it for you. Amen. Harry Krishna can't do it for you. The Reverend Moon can't do it for you. You gotta go beyond the moon. You gotta go to the sun. I said you gotta go to the sun and his name is Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. They say you ain't got no body, preacher. That's right. Write it down. We ain't got no body. If we had a body, we wouldn't have any power. Shout now. But he's got the power. He said, I have power to lay down my life, and I have power to take it up again. Woo! That's the God you serve tonight. These three Hebrew boys, uh, they knew that God could. Uh, they didn't know whether or not he would, uh, but they knew one thing. Uh, what he didn't keep them from, uh, he would keep them through. Uh, they knew that if he didn't keep them out of the furnace, uh, that he'd be right there in that furnace with them. I feel like I'm about to shout. Uh, I'm feeling the wheel in the middle of the wheel tonight. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, is moving in this place right now. I believe uh, that God has acknowledged what you and I are going through in these last days. God doesn't always spare us from trouble. You heard me right. God doesn't always keep us from trouble. He won't always spare you from trouble. The three Hebrew boys said, but if not, we believe God will. But if not, we believe God will. Come on right here. Can you say that uh, no matter what you've been through no matter what you face uh, these past few years uh, these past decades uh, can you say but if not uh, I'm still going to trust him uh, I'm still going to serve him uh, I'm still going to keep on loving him uh, because I know the God that I serve uh, and my God is able to keep that uh, which I've committed unto him uh, against that day. Woo! Hallelujah. Your God is able. Whether he spare, whether he share, he will be right there. In Psalm 9 verses 9 and 10 the Bible says the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. Hallelujah. That tells me right there that God doesn't always keep us from trouble. But he'll be that refuge for you. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. 
the fact that the psalmist speaks of times of trouble here indicates to us that God doesn't always spare us from those times of trouble. We're human. We're in a human body. We're going to face sickness. We're going to face debt. We're going to face problems. We're going to face trouble. But I will tell you this, whatever you face, what he does not spare you from, what he what he will share with you, amen, he will be right there in the midst of it all and he will pull you out of that mess that you're in if your hope, if your trust is in him and in him only. The trouble is today, we've got too many gods in one house. You remember Dagon? They brought him in with the Ark of the Covenant and they set the Ark of the Covenant next to him. And the Bible says in the in the next or on the next day, they found Dagon upon his face. Oh, every God's going to bow down to our God. Can you say amen? They set him back up and the next time they come in and Dagon was on his face again, but he was broken. He was broken. Brother, when the Holy Spirit comes in, you too will get broken before God. Dagon's head, he was decapitated. His hands were cut off. Listen, I want you to know there is no God like your God. And you can't have two gods in one house. You can't have any other gods before you. Why would anybody want to? The other gods haven't proven themselves. In fact, they're not gods at all. There is one God, the true and living God. His name is Jesus. I said his name is, no, I'm not preaching a oneness doctrine. I believe in the triune Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But I will tell you this. He thought it not robbery to be counted equal with God. He is part of that triune Godhead. And he is our God. I said he is our God. For you can't make heaven and you can't see the Father without the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas weren't spared from the prison house. No. They had to go, you, you, some of you are questioning, why in the world, preacher, am I going through the things I'm going, why have I had to face the things that I've had to face. I can promise you that you'll come out of that fiery furnace much, much better than you ever went in. We read in the Bible about a man by the name of Job. And Job was a rich man. Job was a man that had much. One day while he was doing his daily duties, one of his men come riding in, rushing in, said, Job, you've lost all your cattle all your donkeys you've lost all that you have all your sheep everything that you have is gone and I and I alone am survived to come and tell you Job just probably shrugged his shoulders and said let it be Lord let it be but it weren't long and somebody else come riding in told him he had lost even more of his cattle and more of the things that he had gathered for all those sheep and before that one was done speaking another one came riding in and they said Job I hate to tell you this but you've lost all your children they were partying in one house and the house fell upon them a storm blew through listen hey they're all gone everything you own is gone Job I want you to know Job didn't give up he didn't quit he didn't let down but he kept on trust in the Lord his wife came unto him and she said Job you're a crazy man she said why don't you curse God and die everything you have is gone now Job said you talk like one of them foolish women the Bible says that Job retained his integrity hey the boils and the plagues hadn't even fell upon him yet can you say amen his 
three best friends that turned out not to even be good friends hadn't even shown up on the scene yet. Can you say amen? Uh, but through it all, through it all, Job retained uh, his integrity. He said, naked uh, came I into this world, uh, and naked shall I return. Uh, I can't take anything with me when I leave. Uh, I can't take anything but the Lord. Uh, that's what you're going to carry over. You can't take houses and land and cars. Uh, no, 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 but you can take uh, what's deep down in your soul. Uh, the joy of the Lord can be upon you, uh, and even in death, uh, you can retain your integrity. Hallelujah, I've got to hurry. The Bible says that in the end of Job's life, he had more than he ever had. God gave him double for his trouble. Hallelujah. Double for his trouble. The Bible even goes, you want to talk about going overboard? You want to talk about going above and beyond? The Bible says even his daughters were more beautiful than any in the land. The new ones that he gave to him. Are you hearing my voice? He had double of everything he had before. God wants to see if you trust him. He doesn't always spare us from trouble. Daniel wasn't spared from trouble in the den of lions. But God did shut the lion's mouths. You might be facing some lions. You might even be facing some lion devils. But God's going to shut their mouths. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. David wasn't spared from Saul pursuing after him. David had been a faithful servant to Saul. David had played his harp and dodged javelins being thrown at him. David had done everything to be a good servant unto Saul. And now Saul, through his anger and his wrath, had turned on David. And he was pursuing him. He wanted to kill him. David, keeping his integrity and keeping respect for the king, uh, he went and cut off a little piece of his garment when he snuck in in the night. Uh, and, and he had that piece of garment to show Saul, but it didn't matter. Saul's anger was too great against David. And God didn't spare David from any of this trouble, but God kept David through it all. Hallelujah. Noah and his family weren't spared from the floods coming, but God kept them through it. Hallelujah. God doesn't always spare us from trouble, but God will keep you through trouble. Now, there's a lot of people in today's world, they make a lot of their own trouble themselves. Hallelujah. We got some of them drama mamas. Got some drama daddies too. Oh, it's getting quiet in here now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of people create their own problems. That's not the kind of thing I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about when you face a real trial and a real test, when you're in the midst of the hottest fiery furnace that you've ever faced in your life. Look around. Somebody's in the midst of the fire with you. What trouble he doesn't spare us from, he will share with us. Glory to God. Daniel 3 and 19, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. You know, it makes the devil mad when you make the right choices. Shout amen. Devil doesn't want you to go to church. I hope that you listening by internet tonight, not the shut-ins, but those of you that just stayed home because you're lazy and didn't want to get up off the couch. Uh, oh, great God, help me here. Hey, Amen. Those of you that just stayed home uh, because you wanted to uh, uh, just be entertained. Uh, those of you that only listen to uh, the, the music, and you probably won't hear this anyways because uh, you shut it off when the preaching time comes. Uh, oh, God, help me. I don't want to be in the flesh. Uh, but great God I want you to know tonight uh, God wants more from you uh, God wants more from you uh, hallelujah Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury uh, and the form of his 
these vices uh, was changed against Shab, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, uh, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and he commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. We've all been through trials, haven't we? But nothing like we've seen lately. You reckon the devil's turned up the heat? You know why? Because somebody said to him, Our God shall deliver us, but if not, our God shall deliver us, but if not, when the devil sees we're determined and we're going to fight no matter what, amen, he cranks that furnace up hotter than ever before, seven times more than it was wont to be heated, the Bible says. <laughs> Has your furnace been heated seven times hotter lately than usual? Hallelujah. Has the devil fought you harder in the past few years than he's ever fought you before in your life? Dr. Tim Hill, our general overseer, just wrote a new book that's entitled Furnace Grace. He sent it to me in the mail this week. It speaks of this very thing, how in the past few years, we've been faced with this great and terrible pandemic. We are faced with the decline in church attendance and the faithful desire to serve God like we once knew in the church. We're faced with the loss of loved ones and friends along with a nation that appears to be far falling apart uh, at the very seams. Uh, rioting, hatred, murder fill our streets. Uh, and hope is a four-letter word that seems to be lost uh, to many today. Could our furnace uh, have been heated seven times hotter than usual? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The furnace has been turned up because you're doing something right. This message isn't to discourage you. This message isn't speaking negativism. It's speaking truth. It's telling you that these things are happening in our land, but your God is with you. Your God may not have spared you, but your God is sharing your experience with you. The good news is that though Jesus may not have spared you from these troubles, you can rest assured that he will share in them with you. You will not go through that furnace alone. Or Roberts wrote a book years ago called Fourth man in the fire. Hallelujah, I'm about to shout. Fourth man in the fire. Great God. Hallelujah. Some people don't believe that Jesus even existed before Bethlehem. But I've got news for you. Even that old devilish king recognized who was in that fire. Can you say amen? He recognized more than what some people sitting on a church pew recognize. Some of you wouldn't know Jesus if he plopped down beside you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Daniel 3, 24 and 25. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. And he rose up in haste and he spake. And he said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and he said, Lo, I see a four men and they're loose. Hallelujah. My older brother said to me years ago, 
He was actually called to preach too, but he ran from it. He's 20 years older than me. He's 76 now and never fulfilled his calling. I hope he listens to this message. But he said to me years ago, he said, Scott, don't you think that that fire burned those ropes off in them three Hebrew boys? I said, no, I don't. Woo! I said, no, I don't. I said, you see, there was a fourth man in the fire. And the Bible says that not even the smell of smoke was upon their garments. There's no way the fire touched them at all. But that fourth man, he was there in the midst of it all. And he rescued their perishing souls. The devil cannot touch you because Jesus will share that hot fiery furnace with you glory I said glory I've got to hurry did we not cast three men bound in the fire I see four men they're loose and they're walking in the midst of the fire you mean this wait a minute now you mean to tell me that the fellas that I appointed to cast them in, they cast them in and they fell down dead because of the heat of the fiery furnace? And these three guys that are in there, they got a buddy in there now with them and they're all walking around throwing a party? Come on right here. I'll tell you why. Because they were fireproof. Uh, that's right. They were fireproof. Uh, they had Jesus on board. Uh, I want you to know uh, you and I need to be fireproof. Uh, in fact, the way some people are living today, they ought to obtain fire insurance real soon like uh, because they're headed in the wrong direction. I'm glad tonight for Jesus, aren't you? He's still uh, in the fire and he's walking uh, in the flames. Uh, hey, those flames and that fiery furnace uh, cannot touch you uh, because Jesus uh, is right there to share in your experience. Glory to God. I'm almost done. Almost done. Hallelujah. <laughs> he was in the midst of the fire. And the Bible says they had no hurt. <laughs> Are you getting this? The guys that threw them in fell down dead. They're in the middle of the hottest part of this furnace, and they've got no hurt. Listen, this world and that devil can't hurt you as long as Jesus is walking with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the form, he said, of the fourth is like the Son of God. Somebody said to me one time, God sent an angel into that fire. No, he didn't. Well, I could have a spell right about now. God didn't send no angel into that fire, but his only begotten son, uh, he was in the fire, and he was walking in the flame. Uh, they could not be hurt. Uh, the smell of smoke was not upon them. Uh, they were walking around free. Uh, he in whom the son uh, sets free, uh, he's free indeed. Uh, he still sets the captive soul free tonight. Uh, he'll still make you free free. He still cleanses the vilest sinner and makes them free. Glory to God. Feel the Holy Ghost. He's still in the fire today. What he doesn't spare us from, he will share with us. Lastly tonight as they come to the piano, he will be there with you when your furnace gets hotter than ever before. In Psalm 34, 7 through 9, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. 
I could stop there and preach for a little while because the fear of God has all but left the church today. You know I'm telling you right. You wouldn't be able to do some of the things that you do. I'm not preaching directly to any of you here. I'm telling you, the ones that claim to wear the name tag Christian couldn't do half the things that they do today. Hell, come on, help me right here. You couldn't do half the things that you do today if the fear of God was upon your life. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Jonathan Edwards preached years ago and he preached about hell and they were literally hanging on the pillars, on the columns in the church because they felt like they were sliding into hell. The fear of God was upon them and we need that kind of fear back in the church but we've made God a great big Santa Claus. We've made God out to be a God of lovey-dovey, huggy-squeezy. Come on right here. The same God that is capable of great love is capable of great punishment. And you better make sure that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. The fear of God will make the difference. The fear is all but missing, but the stipulation here, the prerequisite here is the angel of the Lord. He encamps round about them that fear him, that fear the Lord. And the Bible goes on to say here that he delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord. There it is again. Oh, fear the Lord. He wasn't talking to the world. He wasn't talking to the sinner. He said, oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. You don't have to worry about that hot, fiery furnace if you fear the Lord. That's really where it, where it all is right there. Because if you fear the Lord, you'll serve him. If you fear the Lord, you'll, you'll shun sin and stay away from sin. You'll abstain from all appearance of evil. You'll live a holy, separated, sanctified life if you fear the Lord. You better fear him now because there's coming a day when you're going to face him. And there's a lot of people that are trying to make it on deathbed repentance. Billy Sunday said deathbed repentance is like burning the candle of life at both ends and blowing the smoke in the face of God. I know what the Bible says. He that cometh in the eleventh hour receiveth the same wages. But I don't think he was just talking about these that openly reject the Holy Ghost. The Bible says quench not the Spirit of God. Bible says in another place, grieve not the spirit. These set church service after church service, and they won't budge. They won't move. Uh, they don't think it's them. They don't think there's a problem. Uh, amen. There's many right in this church. I'm coming down on you now. Uh, one old black lady said years ago, one of my buddies was preaching, and he got to preaching on some things, and she was shouting him on through the whole thing. She was saying, whoa, help him, Jesus. Uh, help him, Jesus. Bring it on down, preacher. Bring it on down and he got to preaching and it hit home with her all at once she said oh lord he's bringing it on down on me now but I'm telling you right now we in this church need to be in these altars I still haven't figured out what you're so scared of maybe you think you'll act like me if you get up here that might do you good hallelujah I want you to know the Bible says uh, there is no want to them that fear him. In Psalm 46 and verse 1, the Bible says God is a refuge and a strength, a very present help in trouble. Uh, that's the God you serve. In Psalm 46 and 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge in the same chapter Psalm 46 and 11 the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge over and over again stand to your feet with me if you would Psalm 34 17 18 the righteous cry 
and the Lord heareth. How many saw that prerequisite there? If I can't teach you anything else, I want to teach you about the prerequisites in the Word. He didn't say everybody. He didn't say that one that's shacking up together. Come on right now. That one sucking cigarettes, that one that can't get enough of dope. Listen, there's hope for your dope, and it's not in the Pope. But there's hope for your dope in Jesus. It's not for those that just want to live worldly. You can claim it all you want to, honey. You can have everybody on Facebook praying for you, but it's not going to do you any good unless you live for the Lord, unless you cry out through a righteous heart, uh, through a clean and a pure heart. Uh, the Bible says the righteous uh, cry, and the Lord heareth, uh, and he delivereth them out uh, of all their troubles. Uh, the Lord is nigh unto them uh, that are of of a broken heart uh, and he saveth such uh, as be of a contrite spirit. Why ain't I getting help, preacher? Because you won't live right and repent. To repent means to turn from. You don't do a 360, you do a 180. Some of them just keep going round and round and round. You do a 180 and you go the other direction. The righteous. You might not be able to trust politicians to render help when you're in trouble. But you can trust Jesus. You might not be able to trust family or so-called friends when you find yourself in trouble. But you can trust Jesus. You might not be able to even trust your church or your pastor. I know what you're thinking. I know we've got the greatest church in the world right here. I've been in churches, some even lately. Boy, we got something good going. We're a friendly church. I've been in churches where you get one or two, maybe, if you're lucky to speak to you. Quiet, isn't it? We don't have a church like that here. We got a great church. But if your church fails you, if your Pastor fails you. Jesus will never fail you. Can you say amen? You may be able to trust in everything else, but I'll tell you tonight, you may not be able to trust in everything else, but you can trust Jesus. When the enemy turns the heat up in your furnace, Jesus turns the heat up on the devil. Hallelujah. Stick with the one who will stick with you. Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight for the word of God. I believe that word, Lord. Whether you spare us, whether you share that furnace with us, we know this that you will be there. You're a God that never leaves us nor forsakes us. But you said you'd go with us even to the very end. Thank you, Jesus. Wrap your arms about these that have faced that hot, fiery furnace, hotter than they've ever faced before in their life. They never dreamed that they would go through some of the things that they've gone through, the devil's turned up the heat in them because just like with Job, you've got faith in them. You've been bragging on them. When Satan went to and fro in the earth, he was looking for one that lived righteous and holy. You said, have you considered my servant Job, there's none like him in all the earth. He's upright. He's one that loveth God and one that escheweth evil. Maybe God's been bragging on some of you here tonight. Keep the faith and know that you're not in that fiery furnace all alone. 
what he doesn't spare you from, he'll share that experience with you all the way to the end. Thank you, Jesus. In your lovely name we pray. Amen. Would you make a place to pray tonight for a few moments? Talk with the Lord. Maybe you're facing that fiery furnace that's been heated one seven times greater than ever before. Maybe you're facing a battle like you've never dreamed you would ever face in your life. You're not alone. Jesus is right in the midst of your battle tonight.